the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty is on the rocks. Why? And if it crumbles, what are the consequences? Stay with us. U.S. Under Secretary of State Andrea Thompson told reporters on Thursday she is not hopeful about saving the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, before the February 2nd deadline, which makes the end of the six days of the U.S. gave Russia to acknowledge it had violated the treaty. Thompson made the remarks after an unsuccessful discussion between the U.S. and Russia on the treaty in Geneva last week. Thompson added she will continue talks with the Russian team on the sidelines of an upcoming nuclear powers meeting to be held in Beijing. Is the INF treaty destined to collapse? What can we expect from the meeting of major nuclear powers in Beijing? Joining me today in the Beijing studio is Zhao Tong, fellow at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy, and Dennis Wilder, assistant professor at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Now, the um, the, uh, um, as I said, Ms. Thompson told reporters on Thursday she is not hopeful about saving the treaty but is ready to continue talks with the Russians. Um, Mr. Wilder, Professor Wilder, what do you make of her statements here? Is she willing to talk or is she only talking for the, sakes of talk, for the sake of talking? Is there any possibility that um, the U.S. could, um, you know, make any compromise? Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about a very serious issue. I am worried about this situation. Uh, the INF Treaty has been good for the United States, good for Russia, good for the world. It has uh, led to the destruction of 2,000 uh, missiles in this uh, range of missiles. If we leave this treaty, we take a step backward in arms control, not only for the United States and Russia, and, but for the world. And so this is a very, very serious situation, and I hope that both sides are uh, conducting these negotiations in good faith, but so far I'm not optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think the U.S. is so adamant to pull out of it? Well, uh, the first indicators of a violation of the treaty by the Russians with their Navitar missile uh, have been uh, flight tests 10 years ago. And as the Joint Chiefs of Staff have told the Congress, uh, there are now battalions of these missiles that are deployed. And the United States claims that the missiles violate the uh, ranges that are allowed under the INF Treaty. Mm -hmm. So uh, this has been an ongoing discussion between the United States and Russia for the last 10 years. Uh, I think that the growing mistrust between Washington and Moscow in general uh, makes it very difficult to discuss this because the Russians claim they're not violating, mm -hmm. whereas the United States claims it has very good information on okay. that. Okay. We have just been joined by Mr. Pavel Falgenhauer, a Russian defense uh, analyst uh, from Moscow. Welcome, Mr. Falgenhauer. Let me go to you here. Now, on the uh, 23rd of January, Russia organized a briefing about the missiles uh, about the missiles that have been accused of violating the treaty exactly the uh, 9M729 missile and a kind of uh, missile system that's called the Iskander M ballistic missile system and Russia invited US UK French and German military attaches and and representatives from NATO and EU representatives but uh, the these western representatives uh, refused to attend the event, Mr. Falkenhauer, what are the possible reasons of their refusal to go and listen to what the Russian has to say and watch and, and see this missile? Well, it was a political, of course, decision. The attaches uh, maybe would have come on their own, but they were given instructions that uh, European Union and NATO countries do not go. Instead, they had a special reception that day in Moscow of the Moscow Association of Military Attaches. Uh, actually, they be, uh, it was decided that most likely in the West that this was not going to be very much new, any new information. The missile itself was not really there, or maybe if it was there, it was inside a sealed container, and that actually... 
Okay, uh, picture froze there. Let me go to our guest uh, Zhao Tong here in the Beijing studio. Uh, how do you look at this uh, back and forth between Russia and uh, the United States? Are we really going to find out? I mean, okay, Russia says that these missiles are not violating the treaty because they can only fly 480 kilometers, not the uh, 500 that was prohibited under the treaty. But uh, the United Sta States says these, these missiles are more powerful. So how can we find out? Well, I think this is one of the cases where both parties uh, seem to be very sincere in making their arguments. There might be uh, genuine technical disagreements here. Uh, remember, both countries lack basic trust towards each other, and that prevents them from going long enough to get into the bottom of their technical disagreements. Because for the United States to provide more information on the Russian, on the alleged Russian violation, requires the United States reveal more methods of how they collect intelligence against the Russian military. So a lack of trust prevents the United States from doing that, and that undermines their, the depth of their uh, discussion. And also, in this treaty, the definition of the range of uh, cruise missile is complicated. It's not according to the maximum range a missile actually flew, but according to how much fuel the missile carries and according to a calculation about how long this missile can fly. So that's that increases the uh, complication of their discussions. For all these measures, I think they have failed so far to reach a basic understanding about whether Russia indeed violated this Okay, treaty. so, but what is the right thing to do at this moment? We're looking at a very deep mistrust between the two sides. We're looking at uh, geopolitical situation um, taking, you know, turns that are uncertain to nobody, to everybody, and uh, um, this has been a 10-year discussion between the two sides. So is this the moment to go and tear up this treaty and say enough is enough? Um, Professor Wilder. Uh, I would hope not. I would hope that the two sides can start to look at this because the implications of moving away from this treaty are very large. Uh, 2,000 of these short-range systems, these uh, INF missiles, were destroyed under the INF Treaty. If we start building these again, they will be deployed in Asia by the United States, they will be deployed in Europe, and this will increase, not decrease, in my view, uh, instability in the world. And so I, I very much hope that both sides are negotiating in good faith and that they can find a way to sit down and discuss this and at least extend the treaty, if not uh, for a certain period of time, if not be able to come to a complete conclusion yet. Yeah, there are some people, some analysts are saying that uh, the U.S., especially Russia, also says that the U.S. wants to pull out of the treaty to fulfill its own geopolitical ambitions and free itself to uh, produce and develop longer-range missiles. Um, Professor Wilder, uh, do you see any of that in the U.S.'s intention or consideration? Yes, I think there's some truth in that. I think the United States feels that as it looks at other countries besides Russia building missiles in this class, such as North Korea, such as China, such as the Iranians, it feels it needs to have a counter. And consequently, I think there are some in the Pentagon who are quite ready and willing to tear up this treaty in order to be able to build this class of land-based missiles. Okay. So there are geo-strategic uh, implications of, of tearing up the okay. treaty. So Mr. Zhao, uh, what is your response here? Um, what is China's position? Uh, indeed, the U.S. has been saying, look, China is not bound by this treaty. Why should I bow my, my hands because of it? I think uh, the most immediate reason for the U.S. Uh, decision or consideration of withdrawal from the treaty is the uh, alleged Russian violation. However, it's also true that for years, 
people within the U.S. military have been arguing that uh, China is now bound by the treaty and China has been deploying massive numbers of such missiles in the Asia-Pacific region. And it is important, therefore, for the United States to untie its hands mm -hmm. and have the option of developing its own such missiles to counter the so-called China threat. So I think the China consideration is an important factor in the American consideration here. Yeah, what is China's consideration in terms of this? Well, the, it's basically the hardline American military strategies wants to uh, de deploy INF missiles uh, in uh, or around, chi uh, around China, especially on American uh, overseas uh, territory such as Guam or in the, on the territory of American allies such as Japan to counter the so-called threat from China. But China developed such missiles only for the purpose of defending its perceived national interests, especially given the frequency of American uh, close-range reconnaissance uh, activities near China's coast. China feels it needs such missiles to counter those American activities. So there is certainly a gap of perception between U.S. and China that is driving the United States to consider developing such, own, uh, such missiles. Of How important own. will the meeting be for the uh, five nuclear countries to meet in uh, each other in Beijing? Very briefly, please. Zhao. Well, the U.S. has made a deadline of February the 2nd. Uh, so after the failure of the Geneva meeting between U.S. and Russian officials, the Beijing meeting at the end of this month will be maybe the only last opportunity for the two countries to have in-depth discussions in the hope of resolving their dispute and prevent this important treaty from collapsing. Okay, we'll be keeping a watch on the situation. Many thanks to Zhao Tong, a fellow at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy, and uh, Professor Dennis, uh, Assistant Professor Dennis Wilder from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and uh, also to our guest from Moscow, Pavel Falgenhauer, a Russian political and defense analyst. Uh, sorry about the technical glitches. Uh, we'll do better tomorrow. That's it for this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle the point with LX. Go to YouTube and search CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got the point.